What is up guys, welcome back to the channel. Today's reaction video is Accent Expert Gives a Tour of US Accents, part one. I have checked this video out before. Um, I think you're gonna love this guy. Okay. He's super, super interesting because he can just flick between accent to yeah. accent. Um, I Again, I when I did this reaction, I haven't done, there's like four parts, I mm -hmm. think. I've done parts one and two, I haven't done the rest. So that'll yeah. be first time reactions if yeah. you guys want to see us uh, do the rest of it but he just flicks between accents which is so impressive okay um and he also knows so much and there's so many little details i feel like you have to watch it more once anyway right okay i'm not going to remember most of the stuff i learned in this no but hopefully you know a second time it's gonna yeah. gonna start clicking yeah hopefully you guys enjoy this video as well because even if you've seen my reaction the actual video or someone else's reaction you pick up new things, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? Um, but this is mainly mainly a you new one, okay. and uh, and hopefully you're impressed by him. If you guys want us to check out the other parts, let us know in the comments and smash the like button. How many likes should we get for this to do the next part? 3,000. Ooh, I was going to go a little bit higher. It's a bit of a challenge. 3,000 is a challenge, don't get me wrong. But I feel like that's a definite goal we could hit. Okay, 4,000. Oh, well, let's just round it up to five. Five makes sense, doesn't let's it? Let's just round it up to five. <laughs> How five. many do you want? 4,500. 4,500. Smash that like button, guys. 4,500, and we'll do the second part. We don't know how quickly, so we don't know what Dave's is going no. out doing. Because we're actually recording this 30 we're minutes here. before the live stream on the Wednesday before we go away. Yeah, so, so we... if we're late to the live stream, it's because we're filming this. We apologise. Let's get straight Everyone's into gonna it. Everyone's going to be mad. <laughs> <laughs> Smash that like button, guys. Smash that subscribe button. And let's get straight into it. New York City. Trenton, North Carolina. Edricoke Island, Mississippi, in northern Florida. That's where you get the sort of Blanche Dubois, Scarlet O'Hara kind of classical southern accent. Hi, my name is Eric Sigger. I'm a dialect coach. Today we're going to take a little tour of some of the different accents of English-speaking North America. Now, a couple of quick disclaimers. These are by no means all the accents in North America or even all the English speaking ones. And not everyone from the same place sounds the same. Accents vary by socioeconomic background, generation, ethnicity and race, and all kinds of individual factors. Because in a very real way, accent is identity. Different people from the same place have more or less localizable accents, and that usually has to do with identity too. Now, on some of our stops, but we're going to be looking at. Some we can't pause much because we have to get to the stream. To be honest with you guys, um, but you said this recently with my family that my accent's nowhere near as strong as like my uncle's and my dad's. Yeah. Do you remember? Yeah, you said that the other week. Yeah, it's your granddad's. Granddad's as well. But yeah. your dad's is nothing like your granddad's, and yours is nothing like your dad's. Just different, very, yeah, my granddad's like proper raw mosh kind of area. Can't understand a word. Dad's not just as bad. Not, your dad's, some words I kind of can't understand. You, I can't understand everything. It's just, with you, it's your phrases instead of what your actual words are. Like, yeah. I can get your words, I just don't understand what your phrases mean. And then sometimes I miss out words, but it's not Which too, really too bad. really annoys me. <laughs> just add the tut in. <laughs> some of the most distinctive and interesting local features, but it doesn't mean that everyone from there has that accent or has it to the same degree. I'm also gonna have some linguists and language experts from around the continent join me today to lend their expertise in some of these areas. Hi, I'm Megan Figueroa. Hi, I'm Nicole. Peace, I'm Sun Michelle. Hi, I'm Kalina. Hi, I'm Imani Doran. One of the things you'll notice along the way is that accents often don't follow political boundaries, especially ones like state lines. They'll follow major geographical boundaries, things like mountains, for sure, but what regional accent differences mostly reflect is settlement patterns and contact. Historically isolated communities like Ocracoke Island in the Outer Banks of North Carolina or the Sea Islands in the Low Country in Georgia can have really distinctive speech ways. They've had the time and isolation necessary to diverge and develop them. That's the other thing that makes for accent variety, time. There's a lot more accent diversity in the British Isles, for example, where there are local populations that have been speaking English in their particular way for hundreds so for those who are asking, I've got a Yorkshire accent. Um, I don't really know. You've kind of got maybe, I'd say, maybe a Somerset kind of accent. or I've got yeah. a Jersey accent. But, uh, yeah, I was just trying to think in regards to It's kind to of England. like it's very posh, posh London. Yeah, very, very posh. Um, people often Maybe refer, Kentish, well, Kentish. Yeah, people often refer to, like, Jersey accents. A lot of people ask if, like, South African kind of small like not as not as like strong i did as not see that coming yeah people have asked before wow i mean there's quite a lot of people from south africa over in jersey it's maybe it's like a, a bit of a tie African, but it's kind of like that kind of posh meets south england kind of 
Wow, there you go. I've learned something new as well. Yeah, I don't know <laughs> because we don't actually sound anything like South Africans, so I don't really understand that. It's in hundreds of years, and there's more accent diversity on the east coast of the U.S. than there is west of the Mississippi. It's been settled by English speakers longer. The first places English sense. was spoken yeah. in North America were Roanoke, Jamestown, and of course Plymouth, Massachusetts, where the Pilgrims landed in 1620. So let's start there. The Pilgrims spoke with what we call Rhotic accents, meaning they said all their R's. In fact, so did almost all English speakers in 1620, including the ones in England. That's right, a Southern English accent might have used to sound something like this. It was only in the late 18th century that fashionable young people in and around London started dropping their R's. That's how we and sound. And from there, the trend spread to America. Now, north of Plymouth. Did you not say? Yeah, That's a little how, bit like that. How we're speaking like that. that Which is probably, one? <laughs> you just went in and no, out. That last one was. <laughs> posh that i mean i don't but that's how people of jersey like yeah like, i can kind of see rich it. you know yeah. important people. Know, that's, how, just, they, just the poor that's how they speak <laughs> that's how the people in in like the government speak in yeah, yeah no i know what you mean definitely Plymouth rock we have Avigad, one of the places you might hear a boston accent today the stereotypical boston accents of course are non-rhotic meaning no r sounds in park your car in harvard yard Let's all get in the car and head south down the coast now into Rhode Island. Traditional Rhode Island accents here are still non-rhotic, but there's a key vowel difference. The placement for that vowel sound in park your car in Harvard Yard. We we'll call this the start vowel. In Boston, it's usually pretty fronted. Park your car in Harvard Yard. In Rhode Island, it's back. Park your car in Harvard Yard. Ah, ah. Rhode Island accents were shaped by a lot of Irish and Italian immigration, just like New York City. So many accents. They don't vary by borough, by the way. That's a myth. I know you guys are gonna tell me to forget about it, but I'm sorry. Sociolinguists have studied this really carefully and there just really isn't any such thing as a specifically Brooklyn, a specifically Bronx accent. There certainly are a lot of different New York City accents, but they vary by socioeconomic background and by ethnicity and other aspects of group belonging and identity more than by neighborhood or by borough. They're historically non rhotic though that's changing some in the youngest generations for sure. Here's something fun most of them have in common. The tongue tip hits the teeth, or close to them, on T, D, and N sounds instead of, you know, a little further back. So you can hear that in like, this kind of New York City accent, tongue tip on the teeth, Times Square, New York City, and this kind of New York accent. I don't know about you, but I always found when you, like, he says a little sort of thing, and I'm just like, nah, no way. Like, mm. think of the accent. And then as soon as he says it, it's just highlighted so, so much. Yeah. Like, it's such a little, like, with your T's, S's, A, you mm-hmm. can suddenly hear it and you think, yeah, oh, yeah that, I've heard that before. <laughs> sure, I'm struck the water, guys. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, I get and, you. Uh, and it is impressive just going in and out, isn't it? Yeah, I like the New York accent that um, Joey Tribbiani has on Friends. Yes. His accent. I like that accent. That's a good New York You're just thinking how you're doing, aren't you, in that accent? How you doing? <laughs> yeah. 22nd Street, Times Square, uh, Dumbo, taxis, traffic, and so on. Okay, so you may have noticed that all of these accents I've talked about so far sound pretty white. I'm going to take a pause here, and That's linguist Nicole Holliday is, is going to go a little deeper on African-American English varieties. My colleague, Amani Dorn, is going to demonstrate some of those accents. Hi, I'm Nicole Holliday, and I'm a linguist. As we know, New York has all kinds of people in it. African American English has a lot of shared features across regions because of its history. So black people in Africa were kidnapped and brought to what is now the United States. At the time, they didn't all speak the same languages. They spoke multiple different African languages. And those languages came into contact not only with each other, but those languages were also coming into contact with the English spoken by the colonizers. This created a situation where there was a really unusual learning exposure to English, right? So there are all of these languages in contact with each other. Um, and for economic and survival reasons, the enslaved people had to, in some ways, acquire English. But the English that they were acquiring was not like what you learn in the classroom, right? It was under this really unusual situation of acquisition. So some of the features that we see in modern African-American English are 
a result of this contact between the African languages as well as the English spoken by colonizers, and those features have persisted over generations. After slavery was legally ended, the majority of African Americans remained in the South but experienced really extreme segregation. This led to different varieties of English being spoken in black and white communities within the South, and even as they moved north during the Great Migration. Nicole, how did the Great Migration influence accents? The English that we see today spoken by African Americans has some features that have persisted throughout generations. TH stopping, so that might be using something like a D sound for where you see a written TH. So dat for that. You can hear that in this clip. They said I could participate online. You do that. What? You say dat. Seen that. No, I say that. That's what I say that. 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 Yeah, but you not don't that. say that. I have heard that being said. But that. you don't say that. What do you say? Say, say that. That. That, like that day. Have you seen that? That day. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> they said I could, they said I could, they said I could participate online. L vocalization. So that's an L turning into a vowel in a word like pool or pull. Might sound something like pool or pull. He said that's cool, 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 cool. That's cool. We also see consonant cluster simplification. If you have a series of consonants at the end of a word, you might see them turn into just one consonant. So in a word like west, you might hear it pronounced as Wes. It's been a minute, but she just left. She just left. She just left. And anything specific to New York? One feature common in New York City is what we call a raised vowel in words like thought and cloth. It sounds something like aw. Oh. Coffee without froth on top isn't coffee at all. <laughs> so let's get it together. Okay, let's go back to Eric. Thank you, Nicole. And even that's just the tip of the iceberg for linguistic diversity in this incredibly diverse city. Around 50% of New Yorkers speak languages other than English at home. And for half of those, that language is Spanish. Megan Figueroa yeah, is here to tell us a little bit about one of those varieties, a variety linguists call New York Latino English. New York Latino English is heavily influenced by Puerto Rican Spanish and Dominican Spanish. One remarkable feature of this variety is a light L, the sound that you would find in a word like like, love, Leaf? Right, so New York Latino English speakers have a particularly light L. You can hear that in this native speaker clip. I guess growing up, I know what it's like to not have a lie. I know what it's like to not have a lie, lie, lie. Because in contrast yeah. to the light L, when you produce the dark L, the back of your tongue bunches. So think about the words milk and pull. The lighter L was a feature of New York Latino English. But Latinx people are a very diverse group so, of people. I was just doing it in my head just to see what. Pull. Milk. Milk. Oh, the thing is, I'm proper Pull. thinking about my tongue though, so I don't know if that's how I Pull. normally do it. Pull. 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 You're right. Pull. <laughs> I can't figure out what my tongue is <laughs> And they speak a variety of varieties. We'll get to more of those later. Thank you, Megan. And this single feature is a good contrast with other New York accents, by the way, because most other New York accents are pretty dark L's. Lots of lemon lollipops, la la, I like to lick them. So now, as we leave New York and head south into Jersey and towards Philadelphia, we cross a major dialect boundary, the on line. Now north of this line, most people say on, rhymes with don. South of it, they say on, rhymes with don. Of course, this doesn't apply at all if you rhyme Don and Don, do only if you have two distinct. On, Don, on. I say on. On. Yeah, we both say Don, don't we? Same. I think. On. On. I say on. Yeah, it sounds like on. Oh, it definitely sounds like <laughs> on. <laughs> I'm tricking you. Definitely I'm tricking Don. You. I feel like, again, like Posh Jersey would say on. On. So she oh, I like sit on. on the couch. <laughs> no, <we're dead. laughs> no one says that. Obviously, that's very exaggerated. Maybe the Queen would say that. Why don't you sit on the couch? It's very exaggerated, isn't it? On. On. Why don't you go on it, the train? It's a subtle difference. <laughs> you're, you're right there. You just seem a bit... Oh, no, never mind. <laughs> I was going to say on today. <laughs> <laughs> All right, girl, we got a stream to get to. <laughs> we got a stream to get to. <laughs> Cut. <laughs> Pronunciations. That's called the cot cot merger, but we'll talk more about that later. There are a few major dialect areas in the US, and one of the biggest dividing lines is between northern dialects and midland dialects. The on line basically runs right along this boundary. So as we cross over it somewhere around Trenton, we've crossed from the north 
to the Midlands, dialect-wise. Now another thing that starts to happen as we get down towards Philly is that the goat diphthong starts to move forwards in the mouth. So we get go, hoagies. Want to go get some hoagies? Goat gets maybe even a little further forward as we get down to Baltimore, especially, you know, down the ocean. You want to go down the ocean on Wednesday? Go on. Let's make a quick stop in DC. Down the ocean. Well, why don't you do that whole sentence? Want to get down the ocean? No, do it in your accent. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you just sound like you're accidentally taking a mick. <laughs> want to go down the ocean on Wednesday? Yeah, I want to go down the ocean. But so. I would say, I want to go to the ocean on Wednesday. That's what I would say. I'd go, want to go Ocean Wednesday? <laughs> no, I'm joking, I wouldn't. <laughs> You'd go, want to go, want to go to the, to the you, you'd say, want to go to the ocean. Probably You'd say, want to. Yeah, something like I that. wouldn't, I'd say, I want to. <laughs> yeah, definitely. See, where Nicole has some really interesting stuff on the prosody of local African-American speakers. In my research, I study prosody, which has to do with the tone and intonation of the phrase itself. In a study, I found that African-American speakers may be more likely to ask a yes-no question with a level tone or a falling tone. For white speakers, we expect a rising tone in questions like these. So something like, did you do the dishes? But African-American speakers may be more likely to say something like, did you do the dishes? Another feature that we see wow. in DC, mm. similar to New York, is the raised thought cloth vowel, that ah. This is a new feature in DC, and we think it's part of a pattern of DC varieties becoming more like northern cities as opposed to the south. You can hear that in this clip. Change is needed, but um, at what cost? At what cost? Cost. Okay, yeah. let's go back to Eric. Now we take a quick detour over to Pittsburgh. Yids are the only people in all of North America that smooths the math diphthong, except for maybe Chicago sometimes. Now smoothing is when you take a diphthong, like ow, and smooth it out so it's just one sound, ah. Just like we have price smoothing in much of the South so that I smooths out to just ah, price. Same price. thing here, except with yeah. the math I got it. Me, that was very price. southern. I got the price. See, it's basically teaching you how to do different parts of accents as What's well. What's the price? <laughs> oh, smoothing out to a long <laughs> ah sound. Yeah. You just want to meet downtown, go shopping for catches? Heading back over to the Delmarva Peninsula, as we head down into Virginia, we get something different happening with that same mouth diphthong. Here it's going to sound like oat, mouth, house. So it's not smoothing out here, it's raising. The tongue starts a little oh, higher up, uh, instead of ah. Uh, so it's like o, oh, o, oh, a boat, house. This feature is called tidewater raisin. Something similar happens with this vowel in Canada. And there we call it Canadian raisin, but it's essentially the same thing happening. Time to get out of the house, keep heading south. Down in North Carolina, we really start to hear pretty significant goat fronting again. So the vowel sound in boat, most, hope, starts with the tongue further forwards in the mouth, O. Oh. Interestingly, goat fronting, which is now widespread in a lot of the American South, seems to have originated in North Carolina sometime in the last part of the 19th century. Remember that regional dialect boundaries don't necessarily follow political boundaries. They yeah. follow settlement patterns and contact patterns between populations. So the inland part of North Carolina, which is in the Appalachian Highlands, the original European settlers were Scotch-Irish folks and Germans moving southwest from Pennsylvania. Due to being relatively inaccessible and isolated for a long time, the accent is distinct from the lowlands and from the coastal areas. The isolated speech communities are fascinating because we can get some really interesting sound patterns. Up here you get some really dramatic face lowering, for example. So the diphthong in face starts real low, down around ah, ay. Face, light, die. You'll also get some particular dialect features, so words and word order and grammar things, that stretch way back to those original settlers from Scotland and Northern Ireland. Things like a hunting and a fishing, and uh, extra sounds too, like the R sound in wash and the H sound in hit. Get on with hit. Here's Nicole again to talk a little bit about African-American speech in Southern well, that's Appalachia. Weird, get on with it, but get on with hit. It's just such a mm. random, it's just a fallen thing. I was so confused when I heard yeah. that, you know what I mean? Um, I never knew that was like a Scottish-Irish thing, though. I didn't know that either. Yeah, me neither. Sorry about my hand being on the screen. We're getting used to this new camera angle. I have just noticed it in the corner of my eye. <laughs> Hi again. So African-Americans in Appalachia are understudied 
mostly because stereotypes of Appalachia are very, very white. African Americans in Appalachia may be more likely to be rhotic. So in words like floor, why up there on the fourth floor, fourth floor, 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 you'll get the R, whereas in other places you might get floor. African Americans in Appalachia also tend to follow the more general Southern pattern with respect to I monophthongization, ah in wide turning to ah, so you get wide. And now the map tour continues with Eric. Thank you, Nicole. We're picking up again in North Carolina. Over in the Outer Banks, there's an even more historically isolated community. Because of a shift in shipping patterns in the mid 19th century, and probably also because of sympathizing with the Northern cause in the Civil War, Ocracoke Island was relatively isolated from the mainland for a long time. It developed maybe one of the most distinctive and different dialects in North America. Obliging islanders will sometimes say to tourists, well, it's high tide on the same side. Last night the water far, night the moonshine, no fish. Ocracoke Islanders are sometimes like called such a, like a farmer's accent in the it UK. It sounds like a mixture of English, Irish, and Scottish. Scottish. Yeah, I was thinking like. I was thinking of a head like are they are are they English over there? <laughs> like Norwich or something like that. Yeah, just like a proper farmer kind of yeah. accent, but a little bit. Of, I, I see the Irish yeah. in there as well. Or Welsh a little bit. A li yeah, just everything. A mix of everything. A bit of a farmer. <laughs> Old high tiders because of that particularly distinctive I sound, and their accent it's is the sometimes eye, taken yeah. to be British or Australian. Even yeah. by Brits. And truth be told, there are some similarities Irish. with some regional English accents, including that high tide vowel sound, which is similar to both southwestern English accents, mm. like Devon or Gloucestershire, and East Anglian accents, like Norfolk and Suffolk, those yeah. easternmost counties of England. Curiously, counties, another distinctive like. thing about the old Ocracoke accent is it's also got a real sort of bounce to it, which is something that both those southwestern and those East Anglian accents also have in common. North Carolina is actually one of the most linguistically diverse states in the country. I want to bring in Kalina Newmark now to talk about Native American English. Hello, my name is Kalina Newmark and I am Talita Dene First Nations from the Northwest Territories, Canada. I come from a strong line of Dene and Métis leaders who are passionate about our language and cultural teachings. The Lumbee tribe is the largest state-recognized Native American tribe in North Carolina. Lumbee speakers combine and pronounce English words that distinguish them from African American and Southern speakers. Since encountering white settlers in the mid-1800s, the Lumbee have carved out a dialect of English that is uniquely theirs. One interesting feature is that Lumbee English speakers share vowel sounds present in the Outer Banks accent where tide is pronounced toid. You can hear that in this native speaker clip. Well, when he got halfway that little ditch on this side, mm -hmm. ditch on this side, ditch on this side. Definitely Thank you, sound as well. So yeah. that Ocracoke Island high tider accent is an accent that's disappearing fast. The younger Ocracokers tend to speak much more mainstream American English. There's a popular idea that we're losing regional accents, that people are sounding more and more similar. That's true of some people in some places, especially some of these isolated communities. But it's not true across the board. There are actually plenty of accent differences that are getting more and more distinct over time. But of course, it's a complex picture. There are parts of the South that don't have all that I much. I guess with the whole people's accent becoming more generalized, it's got to be going online, hasn't yeah. it? Yeah. Constantly talking to people all around the world, everyone's kind of merging into this joint one, I guess. Yeah. But I mean, they're still distinct yeah, ones all over the world, isn't there? Definitely. Southern about them, accent-wise. Raleigh, North Carolina, and Austin, Texas are two good examples. A lot of people from those two cities may be pretty hard to identify by their accents. Which brings us to what is sometimes called general American. What's general American? The first thing is, it's not one accent. It's basically a terrible term for a wide variety of accents that essentially don't have a lot of obvious regionally distinctive features in them. We're gonna to talk to Sun Michaud now. Sun is a native speaker of Gullah, a fascinating and Harvard. really important Creole language spoken in the Low Countries <laughs> in the Carolinas, Georgia, and Florida. Gullah is a language spoken in a region of the United States called the Gullah Geechee Cultural Heritage Corridor, which extends officially from Wilmington, North Carolina, down to Jacksonville, Florida. Gullah is an Atlantic Creole, most similar with Bohemian Creole English and Bayesian Creole. In fact, when I visited the Bahamas, 
A bunch of the local limits are that I've been a local too. There are a variety of factors that inform the language. For instance, the secluded plantations on the Sea Island, a mixture of African languages, as well as the accents of lower class English and Irish indentured servants and slavers. European slavers were so ill suited for the Sea Island's environment that they would often afford long periods of solitary time to our ancestors with little to no oversight. Slavers would mismatch the languages in order to confound them and hinder their ability to organize rebellions. Now, the scheme of this tactic was designed for our Gullah Geechee ancestors to be forced to speak English so that their overseers could be privy to their communications. But what slavers didn't predict is that this first generation English-based African pidgin would develop into a Creole, a fully mature rule governed language of its own, much of which remains with us today due to generations of forced segregation and eventual separation by choice before the building of bridges that increased easy access to and fro. I'm gonna walk you through a few distinct features of the Gullah Geechee accent. For example, the kit foot vowels are reversed for the words fish and foot to sound like fush and fit. The lot trap vowels are reversed for god and pat to sound like gad and pot. The softening of the T's, where butter and bent would sound like butter and bean. Gullah speakers also drop consonants for vowels where the two words meet. For instance, in the sentences that gal there and that boy there, the word for there, de, adds or subtracts the D depending on if there's a consonant or a vowel preceding it. Wow, the importance of accent to the Gullah Geechee language simply cannot be overstated. It is the clearest bond between ourselves and other displaced Africans throughout colonized spaces in the black diaspora. How we sound is as important as what we say because our accent is a statement in itself. This has been your Gullah wow. teacher son, Michaud. Stay safe and as always, we out ya. Peace. Thank you so much, son. So, if you're keeping count, that's six Southern accents already, even though we're not being remotely comprehensive here, and we've only been through a few states. Lots more to come. As we get into the Piney Woods Belt, Southern Georgia, Alabama, and Mississippi, and Northern Florida, we get into one of the parts of the South that's always been rhotic. A lot of the South was historically non-rhotic. That's where you get this sort of Blanche du Bois, Scarlet O'Hara kind of classical Southern accent. You can hear that in this clip here. I've always depended on the kindness of strangers. You hear how there's no R in strangers? Strange, strange, strange. Yep. That's a non-rhotic accent. But that's changed, and changed fast over the last few decades. So most younger white southerners are now rhotic. In most of the Piney Woods Belt, though, they always have been. Now, Nicole talked about the fact that some African-American speakers in the southern Appalachians smooth out the I diphthong, the price vowel in some words, and we get a long I sound. But in other words, it stays a diphthong, I. And this is a pattern we find in a lot of the South. In most of the Piney Woods Belt, though, there's always been what we can describe as full price smoothing, where some Southerners smooth the diphthong in words like fly, rise, and ride, but use diphthong in rice and right. Here in the Piney Woods Belt, we're gonna smooth them all. Fly, rise, ride, and rice, right, life, night, and so on. There's an That's when you get super confused, man, it, when the same accent has mm. one set of rules for these words, but very similar rules. Yeah. Like, nah, <laughs> I ain't I even going for that. <laughs> Interesting posture thing here, too, which is that you start to get tongue tips that are very edge focused. And what I mean by that is that instead of using this part of the tongue, the blade for things like T and D sounds, uh, so that there's a lot of surface contact, T, D. We just use the narrow edge of the tongue, so it's a more focused contact area, T, D. Uh, ten tired turtles talk about dentists. We're gonna end part one right here, but we're gonna continue. That is the end of it. The mm. link to this channel will be in the description as always. Do you That's enjoy that? That was really interesting, yeah. Time absolutely flies in this video. Yeah. It, it kind of. I think when it starts off, you're like, okay, if it's going to break it down, this could potentially be a really boring video. Yeah. But, I mean, he presents it super yeah, well. Yeah, he's good. Going with the accents. And, um, yeah, so did you enjoy it? Then? Yeah, it's really good. Interesting. Um, also bringing other people in as well. Yeah, definitely. That um, helps, I think, makes it, breaks up a bit, doesn't it, as well? Breaks it up a nice little bit. Nice to have other people's. Definitely. 
because nice. you've got that heritage accent in there yeah. as well. Um, it's not just him putting on an accent, no. which is very accurate anyway mm-hmm. from, from what we've seen as well. And yeah. then obviously we just got to trust the information he's given us. Let us know in the comments if you enjoyed this. Let us know if you want us to do part two, three, four. Um, I think there's definitely three parts. I'm not sure about four. We're all going to wrap it up because there's one minute till we're meant to be live. So we're going to stop recording and then suddenly go straight live. Yep. Smash the like button if you enjoyed, guys. Smash the subscribe button and make sure you have a fantastic day. Peace.